Well, there's one thing for certain. Electric cars will transform the world of motoring. And as they become more mainstream, fuel stations as we know them today will experience a shift in consumer demand. The question is, what can they do about it? Electrified vehicles will inevitably enjoy a certain niche, that's for sure. Buses, trucks and taxis are fast embracing the new technology. But really it's the average Joe like you and I who will dominate the demand for electric cars. They're fast, they're sophisticated and they're super cool. And before long, they'll be everywhere. The one big issue for electric cars is charging. Consumers on the move have to stop and top up their batteries. But is this somewhat delayed motorist a threat or is it an opportunity for the roadside retailer? You, you know, I'm, I'm a futuristic person, uh, so I'm always very positive in terms of future. Future represents always more uh, opportunities to me than threats. Uh, but I try not to be naive because, of course, uh, it's also difficult with the future. You, moving from something to, uh, to something new is, is always very different, for a, especially for an organization. But I think what we're seeing now within retail is so exciting with the digital part combined with food offers, combined with new energy sources, and then also combined with a higher, bigger purpose. I mean, the gasoline stations traditionally has been part of, always been part of the problem. Seen from, a, seen from a holistic perspective in terms of we are selling things that pollutes, we are selling sugar and fat, we are selling alcohol, etc., etc. It's not very much positive in that. However, if we can turn into a site, a company that actually with EVs kind of provide green energy, with food we could provide more fresh, more healthy, help people with their eating habits on the go, uh, less sugar, less fat, etc. And, that and that's a trend in the society. And we could be the kind of the channel for moving that. I think that's great. That's a higher purpose uh, at the same time as it creates business. There's one thing for certain. To remain relevant and wanted in a battery-powered age, roadside retailers will have to undoubtedly change and invest. We started here in Scandinavia more than 100 years ago. And if you see what happened then, it's been always a, a box that you sell something and then there's been fuel outside. Uh, that hasn't changed a lot. Yes, the inside, we have changed something. But I think with EVs, with uh, digital, with everything that is happening now, I think it will happen more change the next 10 years than it has happened the last 100. A business has to work on two clock speeds. So you need to anticipate what's coming. And if you work, have people in the organization working on the second clock speed, what we define as future business, then the adaption doesn't have to go that fast when it happens because you're already prepared. If you're only working on the one clock speed, which is current business, then of course every change becomes very brutal. Circle K's success in convenience reselling spans more than 60 years, and in Riga, Norway, they've built the largest electric vehicle charging station in Europe. While customers are charging up their battery-powered cars, there's plenty of other things to do here. There's excellent facilities, the food's great, and the people are lovely. But what's more, Circle K is very tech-savvy. There's high-speed internet access, and also some really cool digital interactivity. Everyone hears the word digital and it's a big buzzword, etc. And it is important, but where do you start? Uh, how do you approach this big animal, etc.? And uh, I think there, I think a lot of companies need help on that. Uh, but when that is said, I also think you, that's not something you can delegate. Uh, and most important, I think, don't think about dig digital as a separate business. It's the same way of doing business, but, but you just put uh, digital on top of it. So digital is becoming obviously increasingly important. I think it was just five years back when we had a very, very small amount of our market spent on digital. I remember I went to a Facebook workshop in Copenhagen and we were all looking at each other and saying, Why, what do we need this for? 
And now we're at the point where more than 50% of our media spend is on digital. And we're also creating a whole new uh, channel, distribution channel, for, for communicating directly to our customers. That is becoming very, very important. Uh, playing on relevance, playing on interaction and engagement in that channel. Uh, and seeing that we're getting very good feedback uh, on that. We have roughly half a million now digital customers in Norway, uh, and that's becoming an, an increasingly important play, play for us. Technology is driving the Circle K agenda in many ways, in operations, in merchandising, in POS, and especially in promotions. Being digital is key, and here in Norway, as well as elsewhere, Mats Danielsson is heavily involved. Digital just opens up so many opportunities to, to engage, to entertain, and to have a rich dialogue with custom, your customers. But you've got a lot of competition for their attention, so how do you break through and get their, get their interaction? I think the, uh, the big strategic opportunity is really to be able to build up your own distribution. It's hard, but it's really rewarding. Uh, build it up into your own app, email, uh, subscriptions, SMS subscriptions. Uh, if you're able to do that, and you have that direct conversation with your customers, uh, you don't have to do that much in paid media uh, as everyone else. Well, so that's how to get their attention. What about this promotion with Circle K? Tell us about that. Because uh, it, it's a uh, wash and win campaign. So it means that you have to wash in order to participate, really. So it's a buy and win campaign, uh, purchase-based lottery, really. Um, the, the big advertising is around the e-golf, which is one of the, the, the main price, really. Uh, everyone that washes gets a paper coupon that they go onto a campaign landing page. Uh, they redeem their code and they get instantly an SMS um, with a digital scratch card. Uh, they scratch and they hopefully win. There's going to be one winner every week. Uh, it's an 11 weeks long campaign. Uh, but everyone that doesn't win the e-golf uh, will win other things like a free coffee, a free soda, a free uh, hot dog, even a free car wash. Uh, and that's also part of the very important part of the mechanic is to get people back into the store to redeem uh, these vouchers and obviously uh, have the opportunity to upsell as well. Now execution is critical with this kind of thing, isn't it? How's, how's that? Uh, I think Circle K really stands out. I mean, the, the way that they do their promotions around the campaign in uh, TV, in radio, across all media, uh, also how they're doing it outside of the store, inside of the store, and also how they utilize the Circle K Extra Club memberships. So they push out emails to their club members. Uh, they even have the incentive for the club members to get uh, two of those vouchers if they wash the car. Uh, so it's an extra incentive actually also to, to bridge people into the club as well. And it's interesting that they've chosen as the big prize in e-golf, isn't it? Yeah, I think that stands out. I think uh, fuel retailer having an EV uh, car as a main price. It's something that draws the attention. It's modern, it's fast, it's casual. Circle K has a wide appeal, not only attracting regular convenience store customers, but also families who want to sit down and have a quality meal. So what we're trying to do now with this new concept is to expand our customer base. We're trying to reach out to the traditional uh, retail, fuel retail customer. Uh, we're trying to be relevant for women, uh, and also relevant for younger people. We're seeing that uh, all our customers, are, our customer base is growing older. Uh, and there is 50% women in Norway, but it's not 50% uh, women in our customer base. And we are intending to do something about that. Snacking is becoming the fourth meal of the day. Because of the time pressure, because you're constantly on the move, you try to eat in between all of the time, which means snacking becomes a huge opportunity. Norway has been at the forefront of technical innovation for years and has always had a high regard for the natural environment. But being green for Norwegians is not just about aspiration, it's also about government policy. So the first thing that people think about is obviously the EV sector and, uh, and Norway being the playground for all the, the car producers on the, on the EV side and that's, that's good. Uh, it, it adds another dimension to, to our uh, channel, which, which we like, uh, and it adds a new type of customer behavior that we also like. Uh, EV customers can also be our customers. They tend to sit and eat longer. They tend to spend more money, so we like them. Uh, that is one thing. Uh, talking about the green sector, it's not only about EVs. Actually, 10 times as effective as the EV uh, in terms of CO2 reduction is what we do on the biofuel side. So biofuel is a very important play for us. And what we've done together with all the other petrol retailers in Norway 
has uh, reduced a lot more CO2 than the EV initiative so far. We're, we're having now up to 10% blend on the, on the diesel side with, the, with bio and also 5% on the petrol side. Uh, and playing more with that also on the HVO side to the truckers and also with this AD Blue that uh, removes the nitrogen from the exhaust and totally cleans out the most of the toxic uh, stuff from the, from the fuel pipes on the trucks. So, so there's a big uh, green uh, play here. Uh, sometimes challenging because incentives are moving a little bit around and it's all, not always uh, very easy to adapt long term. Um, but we're, uh, we're, we're working hard to be part of it and, and so far it's been very, very, very good. Constant innovation and also continuous improvement, as we call it, is part of our DNA in Kostar. Uh, very, very important for us. Uh, we're set up in a way that allows us to both focus on current business and do that wisely, plus adding uh, power and resources to, to develop. Uh, our new uh, EV uh, strategy is an example of that. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure that with this uh, level of uh, resources and the muscle that we're showing, we will innovate and we will develop fast also in the future. Apart from the fact that it's freezing outside, here in the store it's warm and welcoming. Operation in this business is really strong. They have a clear view of the future, they're leasing from the front and they really deliver. The purpose for us is participating really in making the earth uh, cleaner and people more healthy. And I'm super proud of the business because we are a people business. There's thousands of people working in here. And that makes me really proud. Well, given how petrol stations haven't really changed their formats from fuel and convenience retailing for such a long time, from what I've seen here in Norway, the future looks both challenging and at the same time very exciting. This is Dan Munford for Retail Vision in Oslo, Norway.